Tomorrow morning, the trial for Dmitry Karamazov is set to begin. Karamazov is accused of murdering his father, Fyodor, earlier this year. Alyosha, younger brother to Karamazov, spoke to our news cameras today on the emotions the family is feeling on the eve of the trial. Our family is certainly suffering at this time. Given these circumstances, I only ask that you pray for us, and that the truth will prevail. Karamazov family is no stranger to controversy. Fyodor Karamazov, the murder victim in this case, faced several allegations of sexual assault prior to his death, but none ever went to trial. Forgive me, Ivan. Just a reminder. Didn't you go to Smerdyakov the other day to find out about Katerina? But you left without finding out anything? You must have forgot. Nah. Smerdyakov confessed to murdering my... <clears throat> our wretched father. Dmitri was innocent after all. Facts that have since preoccupied my mind. Anyway, it's all the same until tomorrow. I would have remembered it myself in an instant because that is exactly what is causing me such anguish. Why did you have to say it, hmm? Did you really think I would simply believe? You prompted me, and not that I remembered it myself, hmm? Don't believe it, then. What good is faith by force? Proofs are no help to faith, especially material proofs. Spiritualists, for example, they think they are serving faith because the devil showed their little horns. This, they say, is proof that the other world exists. And after all, who knows whether proof of the devil is proof of God. I'd like to join an idealist society someday. I shall lead the opposition in it. I seem to be delirious. I am delirious. In fact, say anything you like, I don't care. You won't drive me to fury as you did last time. I'll simply wet a towel and put it on my head and perhaps you'll vanish into thin air. Glad to see you treat me so familiarly. Ha <laughs> ha ha ha! Fool! Do you suppose I should stand on ceremony with you? I am in good spirits now, though I have a pain in my forehead. Only, don't talk philosophy as you did last time. Talk of something amusing. Talk gossip! You are a poor relation! You ought to talk gossip! God, what a nightmare to have. <gasps> But I am not afraid of you. No, 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 no. I will get the better of you. I will not be taken to a madhouse. For what am I on earth but an all of a relation? By the way, I listened to you and I'm rather surprised to hear you are actually beginning to treat me as something real, not just your fancy as you persisted in believing last time. Never for one minute have I taken you for reality. You are a lie. My illness, a phantom. It is only because I don't know how to get rid of you and I see I must suffer for a time. You are my hallucination. The incarnation of my thoughts and feelings. The nastiest and stupidest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Last night, under the lamplight, when you flew out at your brother, Alosha, you shouted to him, you learned it from him. How did you know he visits me? You were thinking of me then. So for one brief moment, you really did believe I exist. That was a moment of weakness. Ah. Uh, mm. I don't know whether I was awake or asleep last time. Perhaps I was only dreaming, and I didn't really see you at all, huh? And why were you so surly with Alosha just now? She is a dear, and I have treated him poorly over Father Zosima. Don't talk of Alosha. How dare you, you flunky! <laughs> you scold me, but you laugh. That's a good sign. But you are ever so much more polite than you were last time, and I know why. Just that great 
resolution of yours. Don't talk of my resolution. I understand you intend to defend your brother, Dimitri, and to sacrifice yourself. Hold your tongue! I'll kick you! Mm. I shan't be altogether sorry, for then my object will be attained. If you kick me, you must believe in my reality, for people don't kick ghosts. Joking aside, it doesn't matter. Scold if you like. Although it is better to be just a trifle more polite. Scolding you? <laughs> I scold myself. You are myself, only with a different face. You just say what I am thinking and are incapable of saying anything new. If I am like you in my thinking, it's all to my credit. You choose out only my worst thoughts. And what's worse, the stupid ones. You are stupid and vulgar. No, I can't do this anymore. What am I to do? My dear friend, Above all things, I want to behave as a gentleman and be recognized as such. I am poor, but I would say very honest. It is an axiom generally accepted by society that I am a fallen angel. I myself cannot conceive how I ever can have been an angel. If I was, it must have been so long ago that there is no harm. Now I only prize the reputation of being a gentlemanly person, and I live as I can, trying to make myself agreeable. I love men genuine. Here, when I visit you from time to time, my life gains a kind of reality. And that's what I like most of all. You see, like you, I suffer from the fantastic. And so I love the realism of Earth. Here, everything is circumscribed, geometrical, formulaic. But we have nothing but indeterminate equations. I adopt your habits here and have grown quite fond of them. What I dream of is to become incarnate once and for all. My ideal is to go to church and offer a candle and simple-hearted faith upon my word, it is. Then there would be an end to my sufferings. But you are not listening. Did you know you are not well this evening? I know you went yesterday to that doctor. Well, what of your hand? What did the doctor say? Fool. But you are clever anyway. You're scolding again. You didn't answer. I didn't ask out of sympathy. Now, the rheumatism has set in again. Fool! You laugh. But I had such an attack of rheumatism last year, I remember it to this day. <laughs> the devil have rheumatism. Why not if sometimes I put on fleshly form? I put on fleshly form and I take the consequences. Satan sumet nihil humanum ame alienum putum. Satan sumet nihil humanum. Wow, that's not bad for the devil. <laughs> I'm glad that pleased you at last. But you didn't get that from me. That thought never entered my head. That's strange. In dreams, and especially in nightmares, man sees sometimes such complex, artistic vision, such real actuality, even a whole world of events woven into such a plot with such unexpected details from the most exalted matters to the last button on a cuff. The subject is a complete enigma. A statesman once confessed to me, indeed, all of his best ideas came to him while he was asleep. Well, it is the same way now. Though I am your hallucination, yet just as in the nightmare, I say original things which had never entered your head before. So I don't repeat your ideas. Yet I am just a nightmare, nothing more. You are lying. You are trying to convince me that you exist apart and are not my nightmare. And now you are asserting you are a dream. 
my dear fellow, I've adopted a special method today. I'll explain it to you afterwards. Now stay, where did I break off? Oh yes, I caught cold, but not here, in yonder. Where is yonder? Tell me, will you be here long? Can't you go away? Your nerves are out of order. You are angry with me for even being able to catch cold, although it happened in a most natural way. I was hurrying then to a diplomatic soiree at the house of a lady of high rank in Petersburg. She was aiming at the influence in the ministry. I had on my evening suit, I had on my white tie, my white gloves, and I had to fly through space to reach your earth. And you know, it takes only an instant, but their ray of light from the sun takes eight minutes. Spirits don't freeze, but when one's in fleshly form, brief, I didn't think, and I set off. And you know those ethereal spaces in the water and that it's above the firmament. There is such a frost. A hundred fifty degrees below zero. You know that game the village girls play where they invite the unwary to lick an axe in 30 degrees of frost and the tongue instantly freezes to it and the duke tears the skin so it bleeds and they laugh. Well, that is in 30 degrees of frost. In 150 degrees, can you imagine? It would be enough to touch your finger to the axe and that would be the end of it. And can there be an axe there? An axe? That. Durak, what would become of an axe then? What would become of an axe in space? Well, if it were to fall to any distance, it would begin, I think, to fly around the Earth without knowing why, like a satellite. The astronomers would begin to calculate the rising and the falling of an axe. Getsuk would put it in his calendar. That's all. <laughs> you, you are stupid. Awfully stupid. <laughs> Fit more cleverly or I won't listen. You are trying to convince me by realism. To tell me that you exist, but I won't believe it. But it is not fibbing. It is all the truth. The truth is hardly ever amusing. I see you are expecting something big of me and perhaps something fine. That's a pity. I only give what I can. <laughs> Don't talk philosophy, you ass! Mm. God preserve me from it. But one can't help complaining sometimes. I'm a slandered man. You upbraid me for every moment for being stupid. But my friend, intelligence isn't the only thing. If everything in life were sensible, there would be no events, and there must be events. So, against the grain, I serve to produce events and do what is irrational, because I am commanded to. For all their indisputable intelligence, man takes this farce for something serious. That is their tragedy. They suffer, of course. Live. They live a real life, not a fantastic one, for suffering is life. Without it, what would be the pleasure? It would be transformed into an endless short service. It would be holy, but tedious. What about me? I suffer, but I don't believe. I am a sort of an X in the indeterminate equation. I am a phantom in life, without beginning, without end, and who has even forgotten his own name. You are forever angry. All you care about is intelligence, but I repeat to you again that I would give it all away. All of this superstellar existence, all of these ranks, all of these honors to be transformed into the soul of a merchant's wife and set a candle at God's shrine. So even you don't believe in God? What can I say? That is, if you are an earnest. Is there a God? Or not. Well, oh, are not. <laughs> That's good. My dear fellow, upon my word, I don't know. 
There, I've said it now. You don't know? But you see God? <laughs> no, 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 no. You are not some other self. You are my self. Nothing more. You are me. 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 <laughs> well, if you like, I have the same philosophy as you. I know that for a fact. All these other worlds, God, even Satan, all that are proven to my mind, is it merely a fact of itself or an emanation of myself, a logical development of my ego, which alone has existed forever. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but I will be making haste to stop, for I believe you will be getting up to beat me directly. <laughs> You'd better tell some anecdote. Ah. Uh, there's precisely an anecdote on our subject, or rather, a legend. It's about paradise. They say, here on Earth there was a philosopher and a thinker, the same guy. He rejected everything, laws, faith, conscience, and above all, a future life. Well, he died. He expected to go into darkness and to death, but he found a future life before him. He was astounded. He was indignant. This is against my principles, he said. And he was punished for that. Sentenced to walk a quadrillion kilometers in the darkness. And when he had finished his quadrillion, the gates of heaven would open to him and he would be forgiven. And what tortures have you in this world other than the quadrillion kilometers? <laughs> the old days we had all sorts, but now these days they just stick to moral punishments, the stings of conscience and all that nonsense. And who's the better for it? Only those who have got no conscience. For how can you be tortured by conscience when you have? Anyway, this man, sentenced to walk the quadrillion kilometers, he stood still, he looked around, and he lay down across the road. What did he lie on there? Well, I suppose there was something to lie on. You're not laughing. Bravo! Well, is he lying there now? That's just the point, that he isn't. He lay there a thousand years, and then he got on, and he went on. <laughs> <laughs> what an ass! Does it make a difference whether he walked forever or walked a quadrillion miles? It would take a billion years to walk it. <laughs> Much more than that. I haven't got a pencil or paper, I could probably work it out. Anyway, he got there long ago, and that is where our story begins. Uh, but, but, but he got there? But how did he get the billion years to do it? Why you keep thinking of our present Earth, but our present Earth may have been repeated a billion times. Why it's become extinct, frozen, cracked, broken, dashed to bits, disintegrated into its elements. Again, the water above the firmament, then again a sun, again a comet, again from the sun, our Earth, over and over a billion times repeated, endlessly same sequence again and again, insufferably tedious and most unseemly. And what happened when he arrived? Hmm? Oh. When the gates of heaven opened and he walked in, before he had been there two seconds, he cried out that those two seconds were worth not only the quadrillion kilometers, but a quadrillion of quadrillions raised to the quadrillion power. In fact, he sang Hosanna. Aha! I've caught you! <laughs> that anecdote about the quadrillion years, I came up with myself. <laughs> I was 17 then. I was at the high school. But that anecdote is so characteristic that I could not have gotten it from anywhere else. I thought I had forgotten it. But I must have recalled unconsciously. It was not you telling it, but me. Remembering in a dream, you are that dream. You are a dream, not some, some living creature. <laughs> By your vehemence, what you deny my reality, I am convinced that you believe in me. 
no, 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 not in the slightest. I haven't a hundred of a grain of faith in you. But you have the thousandth of a grain. Confess you have faith even to the ten thousandth of a grain. Not for one minute. But I should like to believe in you. Aha! There's an admission. Listen, I am good nature. I will come to your aid once again. Now look, it was I who cut you, not you, me. I told you that anecdote you'd forgotten on purpose so as to destroy your faith in me completely. You are lying. The very object of your visit is to convince me of your existence. Well, just so. But conflict between belief and disbelief is sometimes such torture to a conscientious man that it is better to hang oneself at once. Knowing you are inclined to believe in me, I administered some disbelief by telling you that anecdote. I lead you to believe and disbelief by turns, and I have my motive. For once you disbelieve in me completely, you will begin telling me to my face that I am not a dream, but a reality. And then I will have achieved my object. I shall sow in you such a tiny grain of faith that you will grow into such an oak tree and you, sitting upon it, will long to join the ranks of the hermits in the wilderness and the saintly women. For that is what you secretly wish for. You'll dine on locusts. You'll wander into the wild to save your soul. Ah, so it's for the salvation of my soul that you torment me thus. Hmm? Oh, one must do good work sometimes. How ill-humored you are. <sighs> Alarm, did you also tempt those holy men who ate locusts and prayed for 17 years in the wilderness until they were overgrown with moss? Did you do that too? Hmm? I've done nothing else. One forgets all the worlds and this world too and focuses so much on one such soul. You know, it is sometimes worth more than a whole constellation. Leave me alone. You are beating on my brain like a hunting nightmare. I am bored with you. Agonizingly and insufferably bored. I would give anything in the whole world to be rid of you. You are really angry with me for not having shown myself to you in a red glow, with thunder and lightning, with scorched wings and horns and hoods. But I've shown myself to you in such a modest form. You are wounded in two ways. First, in your aesthetic feelings, and secondly, in your pride. How could such a vulgar devil visit such a great man as you? Fool, fool stupid fool. You keep on telling me I am stupid. Mercy, I must. I make no claim to being equal to you in intelligence. Why am I, of all the creatures on the earth, doomed to be cursed by all decent people? I know there is a secret to it, but they will tell me the secret for anything, for perhaps learning the true meaning of it. I might ball Hosanna, and that would be the end of everything. The indispensable minus of the world would disappear at once, and good sense would reign supreme throughout the entire earth. And that would be the end of even television, of social media, for who would take it in? I know at the end of things, I too shall be right. I shall walk my quadrillion and learn the secret. So then I am sulk, and I fulfill my destiny, though it's against the grain, to ruin thousands for the sake of saving one. How many good souls ruined and how many honorable reputations destroyed for that one man, Joe, over whom they made such a fool out of being the old days? Yes, until the secret is revealed, there are two truths for me. One, their truth, yonder, for which I know nothing about so far, and the other truth, my own. And there's no way of knowing which one will turn out the better. Are you asleep? I might well be. All my stupid ideas, outgrown, thrashed about.
long ago and thrown aside like a dead carcass. You present to me as something new. Oh, there's no pleasing you. Then I thought I might fascinate you with my literary style. How could my soul beget such a flunky as you? I know a most charming and attractive young Russian gentleman, a young thinker, and a great lover of art and literature, the author of a promising poem entitled The Grand Inquisitor. I was only thinking of you. I forbid you to speak of the Grand Inquisitor. And of the geological cataclysm. You remember. Hold your tongue, or I'll... I'll kill you. You'll kill me. No, I shall speak. I can do treat myself to that pleasure. Oh, I love the dreams of my art and young friends. They propose to destroy everything and they didn't ask my advice. I mean that nothing need be destroyed, that we only need to destroy the idea of God and man. This is the beginning of everything. For once man has all denied God, the old concepts of the universe will fall and the old concepts of morality with it and everything will begin anew. Mankind will unite to take from life all it can give, but only for the joy and the happiness in the present world. He will find such divine, titanic pride from this that the man God will appear, extending his conquest of nature infinitely hour to hour by science, and by his will he will find such lofty joy in it that it will replace all of his old dreams of heaven. Question now is, my young thinker reflected, is it possible that such a period will ever come? If it does, all is determined that humanity is settled forever. What's more, even if this period never comes to pass, since there is anyway no God and no immortality, the new man may well become the man God. There is no law for God. Where God stands, the place is holy. Where I stand will be at once the foremost place. All things are lawful, and that's the end of it. <laughs> You hear? You better open. It's your brother, Elosha, most interesting and surprising news. Be silent, deceiver. I knew it was Elosha, for I felt that he was coming, and of course he has not come for nothing. Of course he brings news. <laughs> oh, oh, it is Ray. But he is your brother. No, no, it was not a dream. It all happened just now, it was not a dream. Alwasha, in three words, tell me why you are here. In three words, do you understand? Smertyugov hanged himself. <laughs> 